Hello, I'm Chris Goffey, and right behind me is Renault's latest addition to the motoring scene, the Renault 21. It follows hot on the heels of the new Renault 5 and, of course, the tremendously successful Renault 25. In fact, it's the fifth major new model Renault have launched in the last four years, making their range not only the biggest, but also the youngest of any European manufacturer. Now, I suspect the Renault 21 is also the most important to them because it's a car designed to fit into that vital upper-medium sector, the family saloon market. And, of course, that's the one where you find most of the company cars as well. Now, when I tell you that one in four of all cars on the UK roads fall into this category, you'll see just how important it is to Renault and, of course, to every other manufacturer, certainly to General Motors with its Cavalier, to Ford with its Sierra and the Austin Rover Group with their Montego, all three of which have been around for some time now and two of which are certainly beginning to show their age. So what impression is the Renault 21 going to make? Well, if first impressions are anything to go by, it's certainly attractive to look at. And I'll bet its resemblance to its extremely successful big sister, the Renault 25, is hardly an accident. The essential difference can be seen at the rear, where the classic lines tell us that the Renault 21 has a boot, and a very big one at that. But above all, it's a range of four-door, five-seater, front-wheel drive cars, which Renault claim will permit you to match up all the space you need with the levels of power, comfort and trimmings you require without having to compromise anywhere. So let's see, shall we? The Renault 21 TL here is the base model in the range. Its aerodynamic shape gives it the best drag coefficient of any production car in its class, with a CD of just 0.29. Now, much of this has to do with the wrap-over design of the doors and the semi-flush fitting of the glass, but more of that later. And even though the TL is the base model, its five-speed gearbox comes as standard, as do remote control door mirrors, cloth upholstery, and even a digital stereo radio cassette. And it's all packaged in an awful lot of space. Under the bonnet, this model has a, a 1721cc engine that's developing 76 brake horsepower, and that's enough to give the car a maximum speed of 110 miles an hour, the best in its class. The Renault 21 TS has a tuned version of the 1721cc engine that develops 90 brake horsepower, and that's enough to give this car a maximum speed of 116 miles an hour. Now, the 21 GTS shares the same 90 brake horsepower engine. In addition, it's got a split 60-40 rear seat and inertia rear seat belt. Rev counter, oil level and pressure and coolant temperature gauges. The driver gets a height adjustable seat and velour upholstery. The car also gets a map light. Now, the Renault 21 RS is the top-of-the-line model of the 1721cc engine variants. It's the only car in the particular class that comes with a close-ratio five-speed gearbox. The comprehensive specification includes everything the GTS has, plus fog lamps, tinted glass, and this remote control of the central locking. Inside, the car gets these uh, Paytal front seats, and they really are something. They hold you very firmly in fast cornering. Inside, you get this, uh, this very nice soft feel steering wheel, and you've got the fitting of electric front windows. And if you really want to cut a dash, you can also go for the option of alloy wheels. Now, up to now, the engine layout of these four models has been the same as it is in the familiar 9 and 11 cars. That is, the engine is slung sideways across the engine bay. However, for the top two cars in the range, the 21 RX and the 21 TXE, a different power unit is used. This is the same 1995cc engine as used in the widely acclaimed Renault 25 GTS, but with fuel injection boosting it to 120 brake horsepower. Now, this unit is placed lengthways in the engine bay of the Renault 21, and the power-packed unit gives very good performance. Top speeds of 125 miles an hour, 0 to 60 times of around 9.5 seconds. And we're talking real performance here, together with specification levels that match. For example, the TXE driver and passenger door mirrors are not only electrically operated, they're also heated, 
and inside there's the electronic instrument panel complete with six function trip computer. We'll be looking at these 21s in even more detail a little later. So that's the total range and all in all one which should supply the very differing needs of both family and business motorists in the upper medium sector of the market. What's it like on the road? Well, the best people to test and report on new cars are not, in my opinion, people like me, the motoring journalist, but people like you, the people who are in the market to actually buy these cars. Now, in the normal way of things, you have to make up your mind about a car after a, a thumb through the brochure, and if you're lucky, a quick test drive. But wouldn't it be nice if you could live with the car, put your kids in and out of it, drive it for long distances in all sorts of weathers, and really get to know it? Well, that's just what we did for two families. We researched two typical prospects for the 21s and we lent them each the particular version of the 21 we thought might suit them. So let's meet the first of our two testing families. Traz Ingle is in his early 30s, married to a school teacher and with two young daughters. He's a, an account development manager for one of the major pharmaceutical companies. The car he currently chooses to drive, and which his company supplies, is a two-litre fuel-injected MG Montego. So that should give you a pretty clear idea of where his priorities lie when it comes to motoring. A few days ago, I introduced him to the 1721cc engine-powered Renault 21RS, a car which, on the face of it, doesn't quite match up. Certainly, that's a fact reflected in its price. It's currently nearly £500 less than Chaz's MG Montego. Well, I'm glad you've arrived just now, in about an hour's time. I'm off to Nottingham. So that should give you a... <laughs> well, we asked you to try the car, so that's fine. That sounds like just the sort of journey for your first acquaintanceship. Well, take it away and enjoy it. Have Thank a good you. time. And uh, we'll be back to you in a couple of days to find out what you made of it. Thank you very much indeed. In the meantime, let me introduce you to the other family who are going to be testing another version of the 21, and that's the Hedger family. They live in Cookham in Berkshire. How many miles have you done in it? A senior civil servant, John uses a car mostly for pleasure, whilst his wife, Jean, on the contrary, needs it for her antique book business. Now, unlike the Ingalls, the Hedgers have been Renault drivers for many years now, first with a 16 and now with an ageing Renault 20. They've been putting off the decision to replace it, mostly on the grounds that nothing seemed to fit the bill that also had a classic boot. Now, this is the all-singing, all-dancing bells and whistles version. With the electronic just, dashboard. Uh, so while we wait for our test families to hopefully enjoy their Renault 21s over many miles over the coming couple of days, I've come down to this military test track in Surrey to try out for myself the 21 GTS. Let's go for a couple of gentle laps around the circuit just to get the feel of the car first of all. I've got myself in quite a comfortable driving position here. Lots of, uh, lots of leg room, lots of elbow room. There's lots of space inside. I've got plenty of headroom, and I've got quite a long body and little legs, so I'm always very difficult to find a decent driving position for. But I must say, no difficulty at all in getting comfortable in this car. The controls are all nicely laid out. It's a very easy car to drive straight away without having to think about it too much. And certainly, so far, it feels very crisp, very neat, very tidy, easy to handle. Accelerating up through the gears. It's a nice gear shift, very precise change, and you can feel all the slots in the box. It's not like uh, stirring a stick around in a bowl of porridge that all too many modern cars have. And up into fifth gear. Fifth gear, in particular, is very nice in this car. It's a very tall ratio. It makes for very relaxed cruising on the motorway. I, I like uh, very high fifth gears. It means that at 70 or 80 miles an hour on the motorway, you're cruising along at very low engine revs, everything's relaxed and comfortable, and of course you're getting very good economy. In fact, cruising along in this lovely relaxed fifth gear, I think, puts the Renault 21 in its element. The government test figures show that it's doing 43.5 mpg at a steady 75 miles an hour, and that puts it certainly the best in its class. And when you combine that with a, a 14 and a half gallon petrol tank up the back there, it gives you very nearly 600 miles range. And when you're undertaking long journeys across Europe, that's a very, very important consideration. All-round visibility really is excellent. There's uh, a generous mirror sizes, adjustable wing mirrors on both sides. Really, you've got no excuse for collecting anybody in this motor car. 
So enough of uh, perambulating around the circuit. Let's go down to the test straight and see if uh, the Renault lives up to the claimed 0 to 60 figures. And the start line here will do us nicely. Nice. Well, that was uh, fairly dramatic. Uh, obviously, you don't drive like that on the road, but uh, it's always nice to know how these cars accelerate flat out through the gears. And certainly, the, from that performance, the 21 GTS certainly seems to live up to the manufacturer's claims, and it's very well up against the opposition. You often see a film of motoring journalists throwing cars around on bends, and you think, what on earth is that guy doing? I never drive like that, and nor does anyone who's got a normal family saloon. The point is that you must corner cars at speed and do silly things in them in order to find out how safe it's going to be. Now, look, this is quite a sharp bend. We've entered it at 70 miles an hour. I'm into the bend now. The car's cornering very neutrally, nice and safe and steady. But what happens if somebody suddenly pulls out? I lift off and I have to brake. And there you see the car stays straight. It doesn't dive in, dive out. The back end doesn't come round. It's very neutral, it's very steady. And that's what you're looking for. If you've got a car that can't handle that sort of situation, you know that when the family motorist gets into it and gets into an emergency and has to brake sharply when a kid runs out, he can't guarantee the car's going to be on his side. Now, coming off the main circuit, we're entering Chobham's famous snake, and this really does sort out the handling of a motor car. The cambers are all wrong, it's, uh, the corners are very sharp and unexpected, and they tighten up on you, and if a car's going to misbehave in a corner, you're going to find out all about it round here. Oh, that's very impressive. Very nice. Anyway, that's quite enough of me whittering away about this car on the test circuit. Let's go back to real life and rejoin our families to see how they got on with their versions of the 21. Over the last few days, Chaz Ingle has been on a massive journey up to the north of England and back. Right, excellent, yeah. Well, you've been living with the shape for a couple of days. What about that, the overall sort of feel to the car? Well, look at the looks and the lights at the back. I think it's a very nice design feature, the way they've, they've blacked off the top cluster. Um, so it's all black and blends in with the car. Instead of having orange and white and red lights all at the back, I think that's very nice. They've done the same at the front. Seems quite a high sort of um, boot line. Yeah, that, that doesn't hinder any vision or anything, but it adds to the, uh, the actual space you have in the boot, <laughs> which is absolutely enormous. Sorry about the bike. <laughs> Who's that for? That's, that's for the little girl's birthday in about three weeks' time. There's lots of space in there, actually, isn't there? It, it's excellent for space. You've got the depth and the width, and the beauty of it, it's flat. There's no obstructions. And with the back seats that fold down, they go almost flat as well. So you've actually, you can extend the load space right through? That's right, right the way through into the passenger compartment. But you've got that feature in your Montego. Yeah, unfortunately in the Montego, it's got a ledge along the bottom and also at the top, which hinders the, uh, the height restriction going through into the passenger compartment. So it's very much sort of letterbox slot. That's right, yeah. And here you've, uh, this here folds down flat to the, boat, flat to the boot yeah. floor level. So show me how that works. Sure. Rather clever design for the seatbelt holder coming over the top. And the seat just falls straight down, leaving you no obstructions top and bottom for long loads coming straight through the car. Now, uh, I mean, for someone who's been doing all this motorway mileage for us, you've uh, given the car back in excellent condition and very clean. Thank you very much. How did you achieve that? Well, I like. I love washing a car. And <laughs> my sound it always makes it rain when you wash a car. <laughs> well, it was raining when I washed it yesterday. But the beauty of it is you can find out all, all the different features of it, really, of the bodywork. Uh, one thing I did find was across the roof, the way the doors continue right up to the roof. Um, you wash it, and normally you open a door, and all the water pours inside all over the seat. Um, with this guttering and the trim and the way they've actually done it, no water drops down inside the car and you open the door. Of course, this is all part of the aerodynamic uh, design of the car. How did you find Sorry. it for wind noise on the motorway? Wind noise, absolutely fantastic. It was hardly any. Mm. And um, I was very steady with it because it's still running in. Doing about 65, 70, you can hardly hear any wind noise whatsoever. 
Well, I think Very the good. best thing is if you take us for a, a ride round the streets mm -hmm. and uh, tell me what you made of the car on the road. Right. So, chairs shaking the dust of Swindon from our heels and heading up towards the M4 motorway. How do you find the car on the road? Very good. Handles very well. Very smooth. And, uh, of course, as you near, very quiet. Yes, very not a lot of mechanical noise and not very much wind noise, as you were saying. Hardly any at all. I think the aer aerodynamics are working very well. And did you find it stable on the motorway at speed? Very. I mean, we're, we're doing 70 at the moment. And there is quite a strong wind outside. But hardly feel it. And, and you're in a, quite a comfortable position there, are you? Very. Uh, with the seat being centrally mounted, and it's got the rake adjustments on it, you can get it just right. Makes it a lot more comfortable for the uh, passengers in the rear. Seems to me there's quite a lot of feeling of sort of spaciousness in the car. Do you get that impression? Yeah, I was quite amazed at how spacious it is. It gives you an airy feeling. But the passengers in the rear, uh, with the big gap between the front seats, they don't feel so claustrophobic either. Because that's often the case if you're in the back and there's a great wall of seats and headrests and you're, you're really cut off from the people in the front. So totally shut off, especially if you're a little kiddie in there. Gear change, you like the quality of the gear change? I think it's a very close box. Mm. The Montego it tends to be a bit sloppy and um, it feed about sometimes for a, for a gear. But in here it's very close and very nice change. It looks quite a sort of clear dash panel. Do you, do you like the layout here? Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be more simple, really, but very effective at the same time. And you can see everything from the driving seat? You can see everything from where I am. The steering wheel doesn't mar any vision whatsoever. And the switches are all at hand. Um, how about ventilation? I mean, that must be important to you on a long journey. Does it keep you fresh, this car? Very much so. Uh, you've got central air vents coming from the dashboard area there side vents here that can actually be turned to the window or onto the driver and the same the passenger side. It, it's excellent. Uh, the centre of the console here at the end, there's vents for oh, yes, hot air yeah. to go to the rear. And the they, they give you, uh, I notice, rather a nice stereo of you. Do, do you like a, a nice uh, in-car system? The amount of time I spend in a car, it comes in very well, um, very handy. It's one of the best stereos I've heard, actually. How would you sum it up? Very comfortable, uh, very good looking, quiet, and I believe economical as well. So what would you say to your fleet manager? An ideal car. Well, no review of a family car would be complete without a view from the family themselves. So, uh, Joy, who have we got here on the back seat? That's Emma and Sophie. And how old are they? Emma's four and Sophie's three. And they're a bit of a handful on a journey, are they? Yes, I can be. <laughs> <laughs> and the mobile hearth rug here, who's this? And this is Monty. Monty, Monty the marvellous hearth rug. Yes, he really looks as though he enjoys himself. He's got a lot of room, of course, hasn't he? Yes, he has. There's plenty of room for him. What, what appeals to you about the car? I mean, the way it's laid out? How do you, how do you feel about it? Um, I like the feeling of space. I like the comfort in the seats. I like the colour. Um, the colour scheme. Mm. Um, what, the, the, the actual fabric, materials? Yes, I, I like the fabric, the feel of the fabric and the colour. Mm. And uh, I think it coordinates very well with the exterior of the car. A lot of people have said to me there's a lot of space between the seats here. Does, does that mm. help with kids on the back seat? Yes, it certainly does because often on a journey they need attention and it's, uh, it's very easy to be able to just turn around and and hand things to them all. Mm -hmm. How do you travel them? In car seats or what? Normally we perhaps have a booster seat for them, but both of them are quite comfortable with just the seat belts. Just so the, the rear seat belts work fine for them in yes. this car? Yes. yes, yes, even for Sophie. And do you, how do you like the car? Do you like this car? Or do you like your daddy's car best? Which one do you like best? This one? I like this one. You like this one? I like yours. You like, you like mine? <laughs> you haven't seen mine? Mine's mine's an old car. You wouldn't like mine. I can't afford a nice new car like this. Oh, she's been <laughs> in your one, hasn't she? That's, That's right. Lovely. Thanks very much indeed, Joy. Thank you. The Hedgers, I discovered, had been equally enterprising. They'd taken their car on a long round trip to the wilderness of central Wales. 
yeah. must have been an exciting ride. Oh, it was. <laughs> quite hairy at times, I can tell you. Yes. <laughs> You've given it a full thrashing. I think we've shown it its paces, yes. Put it. And what did you make of the, the shape of the car? Oh, the shape is good, I think. Uh, nice, clean lines. And what about the space inside the car? The interior is uh, very cunningly designed, I think. Uh, it's probably something to do with the, with the shape of the doors and the space between the bucket seats. But it certainly gives you more space than you imagine uh, when you're looking at it from the outside. And there is a, a feeling of freedom, which is, mm. which is very nice, mm. very nice mm. sense of... Well, we'll get you both out on the road with a camera in just a minute, but I, I just want to find out what your kids have made of the car. Yeah. Yeah. So, Giles, Amy and Simon. Giles, what did you make of the car? Well, very comfortable in the back. And I like the way the armrests are set into the door, so there's more room. And also having your own control over the windows makes it, you know, more independent from the... It means the people in the front can't control, can't control your windows. The windows yeah. And Amy, did you like it? Yeah, the seat's very comfortable, and when you're sitting in the middle, you can see a lot through the front. Because they're, they're split? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Simon? I like the fact that there's a lot of footroom. Even when the seat's right back, mm. you can put your feet either side of the seat because... Because you've got because a central runner? Yes. I also like this reading right here. It's very handy when you're on the move. And, of course, the stereos. Great. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what your mum and dad thought of the car. So, cruising down towards Marlow, John, what was the car actually like on the road on this massive trip to Wales you, you went on? It was uh, rock solid, um, nice road holding. Um, I like the five gears and uh, the, the the ventilation and the and the visibility were good. Yes, in general, uh, a very fair run, very fair ride. What about the the uh, the comfort inside? Did you like the seating? I very much like the the bucket seats, the uh, airline style seats. Are they? Yes, airline style seats. They're. Um, I mean, for two reasons. Uh, partly because they uh, they hold you firm, and partly because they give you more room. And Jean, what you're, you're whistling us along at a fair old rate round these lanes. Well, what do you think of the car? I think it handles very well. It's uh, it's a nice firm ride and uh, responds well. You you feel part of the car quite soon after you got in and start to drive it. I think it's uh, it's a good feeling. Jean, you were talking about loads of books and shelves, and of course the, the split rear seat in this one must be a help for that. Well, absolutely. I mean, we, to be honest with you, since I started dealing in second-hand books, we've never looked at a car that hasn't had a hatchback, um, because, you know, one would need to have the, the variety of space available to you, but this would do just as well, I think. One's got a lot of um, a lot of room when you put those seats down, and a lot of versatility. And you've got the security of a boot that nobody can look into. Absolutely, of which is which is quite a factor when you're carrying something perhaps that is, is reasonably valuable. Now you've got quite sophisticated um, radio cassette in this one. Do you use uh, in-car entertainment? Yes, we do. I think rather differently. I I, I tend to listen to radio plays, whereas uh, and and uh, boring things of that kind. You're a Radio 4 man. I'm a Radio 4 man, straight down the middle. <laughs> Whereas Jean tends to uh, play cassettes. Yes, I, te I tend to play music that I like, I must admit. But uh, I have found with this that once you set the radio, it's so easy and, and keeps on the station so well that I think I would be tempted to listen to a bit more radio than, than I've been used to. Do, do you like a high level of equipment in a car? I mean, you've got things like electrically adjusting mirrors and things like that in this car, central locking. Do those things appeal to you? I think uh, a few years ago I would have said no, but actually um, I think electrically operated windows I'd almost regard as indispensable. And since uh, I think both of us drive on our wing mirrors, the fact that you can operate these from within in the car is a, is a super little luxury, which I very soon regard as uh, also altogether indispensable. I mean, when I, when I first got to the car, I thought that um, sort of uh, remote locking device on the key ring was oh, a bit of a... Oh, that's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great fun. Can I mean, you use it? Oh, yes, rather. Yes, I mean, central... I've got used to central locking, and again, I find it a pain to have to, to go around a car locking each door. I mean, Renaults have been the most versatile cars that we could find to suit what we, we wanted to do with them. Subconsciously, if not consciously, uh, a feeling that you want something just a tiny bit out of the ordinary. And does that, uh, this car fulfil those criteria, do you think? Yes, I think it does. 
Well, for me, that was a fascinating exercise. I always like to know what real people make of the cars that we journalists see at motor shows and manufacturer launches. And if the reaction of those two families are anything to go by, other real people like you are going to give the Renault 21 just as enthusiastic a reception as they did. And don't forget, the only way to truly assess the appeal of this new Renault 21 is to get in it and drive it and your local dealer should be only too happy to arrange just that. The new Renault 21, at last. <laughs>